Alright guys, today we're going to go ahead and install a Jewel HVR trigger in a Remington 700 short action. This is my competition rifle. Currently just has a factory trigger that I've adjusted a little bit, but even though you can adjust these factory triggers to an extent, they still don't really get down quite as low as I would like. So when I was shooting the Battle of Breakneck last year, uh, it's the my first PRS match. I got a $75 gift certificate off a of Jewel, so I figured I'd go ahead and try one out. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what kind of trigger pulls we're getting. It's kind of hard with this gauge to get a good pull because of the diameter of the stock, but if I remember right, it should be pretty close to three. That was actually three and three quarters. Go ahead and try it again. Yep, right at about three and three quarters. So these jewel triggers are are very adjustable. And real popular with the bench rest shooters. I went ahead and ordered the HVR model, which comes with the bolt release and the factory safety equivalent. So it should operate basically the way the factory rifle does right now. And I wanted that because I, I took this rifle antelope hunting last year and um, some matches it's nice to have the safety and this gun doesn't have a side bolt release so I do still need to be able to get the bolt out. So let's go ahead and take it apart. We're going to pull the action out of the stock. Um, I'm going to leave the scope on for this because it is pretty simple and uh, we'll go ahead and get it installed. And let's go ahead and switch to the non-torque wrench for removing the screws. Let's set those aside. Alright, so these triggers are captured by two pins. One's underneath here under the safety, one up here a little further. And you can see on this side, one's in here, one further back here, and it goes through this bar that's part of your bolt release. So we're going to have to make sure that that gets all put back together just the way it was. And looks like I can wipe this down a little bit while I've got it apart. Alright, so we want to go ahead and get those pins out. We'll go ahead and start with this back one. Move that out of the way. Okay, so we've got factory trigger out. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of clean up, wipe some of this down. Get a little bit of this dirt off. And for tapping it in, I'm just going to use a small Delrin punch. Kind of an odd angle to get the video, so let's see if I can get this. And you do want to make sure you don't go too far to where it'll impede on the bolt catch. It should be good. We'll bring this one a little more, a little closer to flush. Let's 
All right. Okay, put those pieces in. Let's make sure that the bolt works okay. And while we got it here, let's go ahead and take a look at the pole before we put it in the stock, and then we'll take a look again with the stock in place. So this was just as set from the factory. Uh, just a, a hair under one pound. I'll try that again. Um, Pretty much exactly at a pound at that time. Just a hair under. So one of the things I like about the jewel is that it can be adjusted. Yeah, just a hair under a pound there. It can be adjusted. So according to the paperwork here, it does come with a couple different springs depending on how far you want to go down. Uh, that's how they included the extra springs. So basically for the A spring that's in there right now, it's 8 ounces to 48 ounces. The B spring will take you from 2 ounces to 16 ounces. And then spring C is 1.5 to 3. So. Uh, you can go extremely light with this trigger. Um, you know, if you're a bench rush shooter and that's all you do is shoot from a bench, then you might be going really low. Uh, for me, I may try the one pound. I may be going up just a little bit and take it up to about two because for the little bit more tactical style competitions, I know a lot of the guys do shoot really light triggers, but I've also seen a couple accidental discharges that were very likely due, at least in part, to a very lightweight trigger. So, I definitely don't want to end up with a accidental discharge or anything like that due to a, a lightweight trigger. So, my goal is to keep it to where I get a nice, crisp, and decent trigger pull, but at the same time where I'm not not risking an accidental discharge or I'm not risking shooting it too quickly when I'm shooting a, a higher stress stage or if I'm hunting. So let's go ahead and switch over to the torque wrench. So you typically go up to about 65 inch pounds on the action. I like to start lower down around 25 to 30 and then do the front first and then the back and basically alternate. Go up 5 to 10 pounds until I get to the 65 alternating each time. So one of the things I'm going to do is make sure that everything is fully back against um, that the recoil lug is back where it needs to be. Yeah, check it again, make sure everything's back. Go ahead and tighten. And tighten. And one more. All right, 
Now it does look like, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but that trigger is very, very close to the trigger shoe. So we're going to have to take a look at that and see if that's going to create an issue. Yeah, that's very nice. Very, very little take up. Almost no take up. And then, and barely even any over travel either. Definitely a big difference compared to the factory trigger. All right, let's go ahead and run the trigger pull gauge a couple more times. Just see if this is any different. Uh, that was right at one pound. Give it another shot. Right at a pound again. And just a hair under a pound. Uh, being an analog gauge, I don't know exactly how accurate those are. So hopefully pretty close. We'll do a couple uh, close-up views of shooting the trigger. Let you kind of see what it looks like when it fires, how much the trigger is actually moving, give you an idea. And this is still basically set up how it came from Jewel. No adjustments of any yet. I'm going to start playing with that a little bit, do some dry fire practice, maybe try to get to the range and see how I like it. Unfortunately, it's supposed to snow and be really cold this week, so I don't know if I will be able to shoot it this weekend, but start giving it a try, see how I like it, and then kind of go from there to see if I want to go up a little bit and wait to give myself a little more kind of safety and peace of mind for hunting or a competition if I have to put gloves on, but we're going to give it a shot how it is. So guys, that's installing a Jewel Trigger in a Remington 700. Thanks for watching, and tune in next week for the next video.